on over here because Tunic might be about a tiny uh, fox, but there's clearly nothing tiny about the game. I'm Jeff. Nice to meet Hi. you. I'm Kai. Nice to Kai. How are you? Good to see you. Jordan. Nice Jordan, how are you guys? Now, you may remember this game. Um, last year, I think, uh, we were talking a lot about, uh, you know, smaller independent games, and Kai is here, and, uh, uh, and from Modus Games, brand uh, director, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we've also got uh, Jordan here. So, all right, guys, let's take a look at Trine 4 and what we can uh, check out here. Cool. we got a live demo. We yeah. have a live demo for you Fantastic. today. Fantastic. All right, so all tell right. us a bit about the game. I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. All right, so we're playing uh, a new demo of Trine 4. Yeah. Uh, we're playing in a level called the Goldleaf Gardens. It's, uh, it's one of those levels uh, very much inspired by the Finnish nature. We're a company from Finland, so um, yeah. it's a very autumny level with a lot of warm colors. And we're starting off here with a puzzle. We're going to break these roots with the arrow of the thief. And uh, that gets the water flowing. The water hits this uh, dry plant on the ground and uh, that Looks grows like up these the beautiful rain. flowers. Yeah. Uh, so Trine 4 is very much uh, a puzzle platforming uh, action adventure game, if you yep. call it that. Uh, we've gone back to the 2.5D side-scrolling roots uh, and um, yeah, here with a new adventure. Uh, next up, we're seeing uh, another one of those uh, water puzzles. We gotta somehow redirect this water flow onto the plant on the, on the dry ground on the left. Yeah. And we're gonna attach a box to the spikes, do a little rope onto the box and rope which we can walk on and finally reflect it with uh, the knight's shield. Yeah. So a lot of times the puzzles in Trine 4 uh, require you to coordinate the abilities of the three heroes. And uh, well, they all come with distinctive abilities. So it makes I, sense. I mean, there's so much puzzling to this. This is beautiful. It's like I think, yeah, a lot of layers of, uh, of uh, puzzling and physics and everything all come into life in such a beautiful, uh, beautiful world as you kind of go through it, which is amazing. So switch characters on the fly there for different abilities to get through yep. different yeah. moments, right? Wow. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to use the wizard here to levitate the boxes. Uh, right. Levitation magic is the wizard's power. And uh, we're gathering these experience vials from the, this uh, little hidden cave here, which we can yeah. later use for unlockable new abilities for the heroes. Uh, uh, he uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, here we're seeing a light beam, which we are shining onto the, li onto the plants. Yeah. Uh, as we know, the plants need both water and light to grow. So, yeah. So our path is blocked here, so there's another plant you can kind of see, take some clues from the environment as far as what you should be doing. Right. So yeah, we need to somehow shine this light that's on the left onto the, the flower that's on the right. Yeah. And we have these two boxes that are blocking our path, so yeah. we, we've got a puzzle to solve here. Uh, but we combine the boxes with a rope and attach them to the spikes, and then finally we can shine the light on, onto the plant with a shield and uh, wow. these beautiful giant well, not giant, but pretty big flowers that are quite powerful because they move. No, I love that you've flowers. got the combat, but you've also got a lot of puzzling in, in this yeah. amazing, beautiful world. That's just Trine 4, so people that may not have played the other Trines, uh, are they still available? Will be able to check them out? Yeah, all the three Trine games uh, so far are available, pretty much all the platforms, so uh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, all right. Well, I know uh, the Ultimate Collection is coming this fall as well, right? Yeah. Uh, so the ultimate collection is uh, trying one to four. Yeah. Uh, all in the in the same. Oh, package. cool! So you get all four of them. Yeah, all four. Of them. Okay, so the first three plus the new one, which yeah. is amazing. I mean, trying's been around for a good, what, like a uh, decade? Almost ten years. Uh, okay. Ten year anniversary is coming up pretty soon. Okay. That's amazing. Well, again, it's like I think it's such a beautiful, uh, rich game world, and I love the sort of elements of puzzles and you know, as Steve Dutilla was saying, it's like a lot of games here with like guns and shooting, and this is just such a beautiful, rich world that just invites you in and again the level of detail on the art is just incredible on the engine and I just think it's such a, uh, an amazing looking game with a ton of fun to play so uh, we're excited to see uh, Modus as you guys kind of bring out more titles and we get to check them out but this is definitely something that uh, we'll look forward to. When is this one coming out? Uh, it's coming out fall this year. Okay. Uh, we haven't really announced the uh, exact date. But this year? Coming this year. Yeah. It yeah. looks yeah very polished and fantastic. Well thank, thank you so much guys for uh, yeah I look at this it's just like physics, yeah. light, water. A lot of fun physics. combinations to make. I was going to say, that's how you get through it. All right, well, thank you guys so much for giving us a sneak peek yeah. at oh, uh, Trine 4, which you guys can check out later this year. And now we're going to head on back, because now I think it's time to talk about a fox. It's like, I said that over there, but that was Trine 4. Now we're here to talk, oh, he's got wearing the fox shirt. I'm Jeff, nice to meet you. Harris, great to meet Harris, you. Harris, how are you? Felix. Felix, how's everything? Yeah. Well, guys, I'm so excited to talk about Tunic. You may remember this one from the in, uh, Xbox press conference last year. Um, which was an amazing game. And, and the story of this development is incredible, right? Because tell us a bit about uh, the size of the team making this game. 
It's uh, mostly a size of one for exactly. the most part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is being developed by Andrew Schuldice. Uh, he's not here with us this week. Because he's busy working on his game. Busy working on his <laughs> game. You know, you got games of 20, 50, thousands yeah. of people, and when it comes to mainly one person making a game, yeah. it's probably best they work on it. So Andrew's yeah. back home working real hard on Up it. Up in Canada, right? Isn't he yes. in Nova Scotia? Nova Scotia, <laughs> Halifax. Halifax. Well, hello, Andrew, if you're watching. Um, if he's not busy developing. And yeah, this was a fun game, and I, you know what I love about E3 in this industry is that we have massive games made by hundreds of people, and then something like Andrew being able to make this game you said basically a team of one, but obviously you guys are, are helping him bring it to life at least or, or share it with the world. Um, so Tunic, is there new stuff here at E3? What can we expect from it? So at E3, you can play our demo. It's part okay. of the Microsoft area over yeah. next door at LA Live. Oh, cool. Uh, and you can check out a tweaked combat system, yes. add us some other little bits and pieces. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's what we're showing. Wow. So it's amazing. I mean, he's been working on this for how many years now? Two and a bit, three-ish. Wow. Yeah. Depends yeah. on the day. Yeah, depends <laughs> on the day. Yeah. yeah. No, but again, it's such a beautiful, interesting game and playable over at Xbox. And where is he at in development now on it? Uh, active. Okay. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. No I set mean. release date, but it's such an amazing, beautiful game and game world. So tell us a bit about, uh, you know, Tunic and the gameplay that we're going to see, obviously, yeah. combat-based. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So Tunic is small fox, big world. Okay. Uh, it is heavily inspired by, you know, classic games that you would pick up. You know, Andrew talks about how he wanted the game to feel like you got it at a rental shop or something and there's no instruction manual. Yeah. And so you're having to use your wits and uh, gaming knowledge to, like, figure out this really esoteric world. Uh, and, yeah, it's all about, you know, exploring the countryside, fighting monsters, and discovering secrets. A lot of secrets in, uh, in Tunic. Yeah, no, I imagine that's uh, filled with secrets and uh, an adventure for you as you go through it. Um, now, in terms of the sort of you know gameplay as it evolves over time, are is you upgrading sort of the the weapons and whatnot for? Uh, not so much upgrading okay. in a sense of you know adding stats, but yeah. you will find a variety of weapons okay. that'll help you defeat monsters more easily uh, versus you know previous iterations of said weapon or you know different items that'll help you solve problems. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how one person. So he does the art, the programming, all of it. Everything. Yeah. We like to say everything that you're seeing on screen is Andrew. The okay. sound is done by the wonderful folks at Power Up Audio. Okay. They do a lot of good indie stuff, and then the music yeah. is by Lifeformed. Okay. Uh, a lot of, yeah. I was gonna say that would have been quite something if he was doing this. <laughs> right. I mean, it's still it's still a lot. Like it's still yeah. really 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 good for him on it. This is his first major 3D project. Yep. And he's just knocking out of the park. Yeah. No, it looks amazing. And again, I love that. I mean, just the the artistry of it and the beauty of it. It's so cute. And uh, again, animation, art, programming, design. Yeah, writing. Busy oh. up in Halifax. Definitely. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, it sounds like we're going to have to wait a little while to play it, but uh, we're excited to see it kind of continue to evolve. The fact that uh, it was here last year at E3 and back this year is great to see. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing more on uh, Tunic. And obviously, Pinji, you guys have done such a great job, I think, supporting so many independent studios um, all around the world who are working on exciting new projects. So um, we're looking forward to what's coming from you guys as well. Uh, so we're working on a game called Overland in-house. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yes, that's a turn-based survival strategy game. Yep. Uh, really neat there. That'll be out later this year in the fall. Yep. Uh, that'll be on all major platforms. And Apple Arcade, too. Apple I think, Arcade. Right? Yep. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we uh, we did Night in the Woods a couple years back. Yep. Uh, we also won making... a bunch of awards at Game Awards. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. really, really fun to see. Um, and then we also have a nice game called Wilmot's Warehouse. Yeah. Which ironically, is... our oh, yeah. favorite yes. game. The game is terrific. Yes. Uh, I, I want everyone in the world to experience Wilmot's it's so Warehouse. Good. It's a joyful puzzle game. Yeah, no, that's why I said you guys have such an eclectic, interesting group of games, but they're always, like, super amazing. And, yeah, I can't wait to see what's, uh, what's next from the teams because, uh, again, it's, that's what I love about this industry is we've got games of all different types and sizes, and this will be, i got to play this over. So it's playable over at Xbox? Yep, right next door. Oh, wow. Awesome. All right, we'll go check it out. Well, thanks, guys, for stopping by. Thank you.